Hello, my friend, and welcome to Something for Everybody. My name is Aaron Mashbitz, and today is a solo episode of the podcast where I'm discussing how we can become more mentally tough. Specifically, I think there are four C's that we can tackle and focus on when trying to become more mentally tough. So to kick us off, here is a quote from Kobe Bryant. Everything negative, pressure, challenges, setbacks are all opportunities for me to rise. And that totally sums up one of my favorite mantras, ohms. Obstacles make me stronger. That's the mantra, the mindset that we need to adopt when we face challenges or obstacles or setbacks. Because mental toughness is not a talent, but it's a skill that you develop like a growth mindset, like any mindset or perspective shifts. They're not innate, born in us. We are human beings who can learn and adapt and grow. That's why I named my mindset program Champions Adjust, because that's what we have to consistently do over our lifetime to blossom into this best version of ourselves in greatest service of the world. So once again, really understand that mental toughness is not a talent but it's a skill that we can develop over time and takes work, takes practice, takes deliberate, consistent practice over a long period of time to step into this mentally tough mindset, right? It takes work, it takes persistence. And I think maybe most importantly, it takes adaptability. Again, being able to adjust, being able to pivot and not getting stuck in one place. And so before we actually move into the four C's, I think there's a foundational piece of mental toughness that we have to address. And I think that foundational piece of mental toughness is optimism. Optimism is the fundamental belief that things will work out for the best through the proper work, effort, attention, and focus. I believe you can either be optimistic or pessimistic. I don't believe you can be realistic or a realist because I think being a realist is part of what's true optimism. Now there's this idea of naive optimism, which is thinking, yeah, I'm gonna change nothing and it's all gonna work out. That's a dangerous and naive mindset to have. That's not the optimism I'm thinking about. The optimism I am talking about, which I learned from Dr. Michael Gervais, is rooted in reality. It's rooted in acceptance. It's rooted in this is what it is. But, through the right work, effort, attention, focus, there is a chance, there is a belief that things can work out for the best. And the most mentally tough, most mentally resilient people that I know or have trained or have worked with are inherently optimistic. Not because they were born with that, but but they trained it over time so that it became part of their nature to be optimistic, to, to fundamentally believe, okay, we're in a tough spot right here. We're down 12 runs. Someone just hit a home run off me. I lost that sale. Damn. Okay. But, I, but through the right work, effort, attention, and focus, I know there is a chance that things can work out for the best. So we're going to go into the four C's of being mentally tough, but the foundational piece, the strongest, most mentally resilient, most mentally tough people I know have built an optimistic mindset into their life because they they hunt the good stuff. They've become researchers of the good. And that's how you start to build an optimistic mindset. You see the good in all sorts of things, even when things are down, even when things might not be good. It's rooted in reality. It's an acceptance mindset, but then a belief that we can grow, we can get better, we can still be great from here and things can still work out. So, that's an important mindset to have while trying to develop these four C's of mental toughness. So the first C is confidence. Now, before we dive into this, is just a little snippet about confidence. I did a full-blown masterclass podcast episode on confidence, which is episode 239 of this podcast. So I urge you to pause it right here. Go watch that episode 239, listen or watch, then come back to this for a little refresher on confidence as how it is part of becoming more mentally tough. So confidence, confidence really means intense trust in oneself. It's the feeling that you are capable, 
It's having the courage to try to learn and to grow. That's confidence. Confidence is not thinking that we know it all. That's arrogance. We don't want that. Arrogant people are weak. Okay. Arrogant people are weak. Confident people are strong because they know that they have trust in themselves, but they also have the ability to grow and learn. They have this courage about them to go and try new things, even in unfamiliar territories, even in unfamiliar waters. They have this confidence, this intense trust in themselves, but they know, wow, I can get better from here. And that's a cool thing to have. And obviously with that confidence, with that intense trust, you have a more mentally tough, more mentally resilient person. So even when they knock, they get knocked down, they stand right back up. Fall seven, rise eight. Fall seven, rise eight. That is confidence. Confident people trust their skills and face challenges head on. They have a bring it on mentality. Another one of my favorite self-talk mantras is bring it on. Why? Because life is about accepting the challenge. There's never gonna be a day that's just easy, perfect. I mean, there might be, right? If you guess, I don't know. But if you're, if you're trying to go out and do something, if you're trying to be all in, if you're trying to make a commitment to living your absolute best life, there's going to be challenges along the way. If you're trying to be the best mom, the best dad, the best business person, the best boss, the best CEO, the best leader, the best student, the best friend, anything, the best athlete in the world, if you're trying to go all in on something, which is what I highly recommend doing if you wanna live a fulfilling life, then you're gonna be faced with challenges. And we have to accept those challenges head on and step forward into growth and have an approach mindset. The most psychologically stable individuals have an approach, not an avoidance mindset. So we have to step forward into those challenges, get to the edge of our capacity and see what we're really capable of. That's having intense trust in oneself. And that's facing challenges head on. That's the idea of bring it on. And so confident people, again, trust their skills and face challenges head on, right? They do the work consistently. They have earned the right, the credible right to be confident in certain areas and have this translation of skill that they know they, they put in work here and they've built in this reputation within themselves that they're going to do the work. And so they're confident to step into another domain, knowing they're just going to learn and learn and learn along the way. They're prepared and they adapt and they believe in their capacity to succeed. I think there's three things that we can focus on. Again, please visit episode 239 of this podcast for a much deeper, deeper dive into confidence and anti-fragile confidence. But quickly recap here, three things that I think are uber important that we need to focus on when trying to build our confidence. One is thinking about our previous success. Previous, previous success gives us the credibility to know that we did it once before, we can do it again. And this becomes in any domain that you might be in. So have the highlight reel in your head, play that highlight reel over and over again. When you crush that deal, when you did this thing, when you hit that ball, boom, 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 boom. Have that ready or write down your top 10 list of previous production or previous success, okay? The second thing is preparation, luck, favors the prepared. It begins before it begins. The most prepared people are generally the most confident people. Look at, listen to this quote from Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow, quarterback from the Cincinnati Bengals. Confidence has preparation behind it. There's a lot of false confidence out there and I think you could describe that as swagger. The reason that I'm confident is I know I put in the work. That's preparation. Luck favors the prepared. And the last part of confidence, especially in the midst of the competition or the presentation or whatever activity you're involved in, is your self-talk. I've already talked about two things that I say to myself over and over and over again. Obstacles make me stronger and bring it on. That sort of self-talk will enhance our confidence. We know the type of self-talk that will destroy our confidence. We know that, talking smack to ourselves. So we wanna uplift, we wanna encourage, we also wanna have neutral thinking involved in our self-talk. And so bring it on and obstacles make me stronger. Is that neutral thinking? Is that right self-talk? Is the credible self-talk that's gonna enhance our confidence? So that's number one of the four C's of mental toughness, confidence. Number two, control. This involves maintaining emotional control and staying composed under pressure situations or under pressure moments. It means emotional intelligence. It means working through your emotions. Mentally tough people 
manage their emotions, avoid spiraling into negative cycles, and stay focused on their target, or they stay focused on what's important now. So when we think about control, one thing that probably comes up for you is focusing on the things we can and the things we can't control. The most mentally tough, mentally resilient, mentally sound individuals, this is a stoic idea, focus fully on the things they can control. Now, if you sum everything up, there's, so, there's, there's a few things we can control in life. If you sum it up into most simplest form, it's your attitude, your effort, and your response, right? That includes your focus, that includes your choices, that includes all these other things. But this big umbrella term, if we want to dial in and make it as simple as possible, what do I have control over? I have control over my attitude, my effort, and my response. Everything else, I have to let go of. Now, much harder said than done, but we have to actively practice doing that. Over the long period of time, we get better at it. It's a skill we develop. And then with knowing what we can and can't control gives us a better idea of how we can control our emotions in these high pressure situations, whether that be in sport or in business. And then we are out, we're able to stay composed better because we know what's under our control. I can't control this or that or this thing or that thing or that thing, but I can control how I show up, my effort, my attitude, how I respond, my focus, how I prepare, my breathing, my body language, all these sorts of things are in that domain of control that I can hyper focus on and let go of everything else. And that allows you to stay more focused on what's important now. That's also part of control. When, what's important now? That's the most, that's a huge question you can ask yourself in these situations to have this present moment focus and be under control because what is the most important thing right now? That's your present moment focus and dial in on that. And that gives you more control over the things you do have control over and let go of everything else. That's number two, control. Number three, commitment. Mentally tough people are committed. I mentioned this in the confidence portion. Mentally tough people are all in. They're not halfway in. They're not 90% in. They're not 98% in. They are 100% in. They have committed. They've made a bright line that this is what they want to do, and they're all in. Commitment. It's the process of setting targets and consistently working towards them despite the obstacles. Over and over and over again, we've talked about obstacles. Obstacles make me stronger. There's gonna be setbacks and roadblocks. Roadblocks, excuse me, you're gonna get punched in the face, you're gonna get knocked down, fall seven, rise eight. How committed are you really on this path? How much do you really want the thing you said you want? You wanna play division one baseball? You wanna get into a good, great university? You wanna get your first job? You wanna be an entrepreneur? You wanna be a content creator? Okay, how committed are you? Because every single person's competitive advantage is doing the thing longer than anyone else. It's simply just not giving up. That's commitment. Knowing no matter how hard it gets, I will not give up. I've made that promise to myself with this podcast. I don't care how many people listen or don't listen to this podcast. I'm going to do it until I cannot do it anymore because I enjoy it. And because I'm really good at it. Yes, I said it. And I think people can get a lot of value from listening or watching this show. And so I'm committed to doing it. I am all in with upgrading my audio and my camera and my lights and my studio and all sorts of things and my editing and having Ben with me and all these sorts of things because I'm all in. I'm all in. This is episode 259 of this podcast. We're coming up on our four year anniversary. <sighs> Amazing. I just listened to Theo Vaughn. He did, he's over 500 now with his seven year anniversary. Amazing stuff. You have to commit. What is your competitive advantage? Doing it longer than anyone else and saying, I will not give up no matter how hard it gets. Commitment is choosing discipline over comfort, choosing discipline over comfort. It isn't giving in to monetary desires, but it's choosing to be dedicated and determined regardless of what feedback or instant gratification or praise you might receive. You're simply doing it because you love doing the thing. You've fallen in love with playing the game, with running the business, with being an entrepreneur, with whatever it is, and you're committed. Yes, some days are going to be hard. Some days I'm like, fuck, this sucks. I do, 
But man, it doesn't change the fact that I'm fully committed. I've gone all in. You have to go all in on you, whatever it is, on becoming more mentally tough, on doing anything that you're doing. Being more mentally tough will allow you to be that much more resilient in whatever domain you live in. Now, I always use it in a sports context because those are the athletes that I work with. That's the athletes that I coach, baseball players mostly. And we have to be resilient. We have to be able to bounce back quickly in baseball because so many different things are there to frustrate us. So if we don't, if we don't let those frustrations take over us, we focus on the things we can control, how I respond, my attitude and my effort, we're going to be that much more dialed in and committed over the long haul and see much more results and more outcomes in the influence where we want them to be. And that's what's choosing discipline over comfort means. That's what commitment is. That was number three, commitment. And number four is challenge. This is, sums up basically everything that we've been talking about. Challenge is the fourth C of becoming more mentally tough. Challenge. It means embracing. It means embracing challenges, adversity, and resilience. It means knowing things will never be easy. It means expecting them to be hard and going in all in no matter what, even though it's going to be hard and the waters are going to be rocky and you're going to get thrown around and thrusted up and, and, and you're gonna, just things are going to happen that are going to be hard. And you're expecting those challenges because they make you stronger. It means learning from your setbacks. It means viewing challenges as opportunities. I've said this a bunch of times already, fall seven, rise eight. How can you continue to press ahead, to press ahead, to press ahead, to press ahead, no matter what? Resilience isn't about avoiding challenges. That's impossible, impossible. It's about choosing to face those challenges and move forward better than before. I love this idea from Dr. Jordan Peterson about facing our fears. Fear is always going to be there, always, always. But as we continue to move forward and approach those fears, we don't get less scared, but we get more brave, more brave, more brave, and more courageous, not less scared, but more brave because we're stepping forward into those challenges. We're having a psychologically stable mindset of approach, 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 rather than avoid. So challenge, obstacles make me stronger, go forward into growth, see what happens, and then learn from it and iterate, review, and then go continue to execute. Remember, doing the thing is the only thing that's doing the thing. Thinking about it, reading about it, talking about it is not doing the thing. It's always, always action. And my favorite three-step approach to change is this that I've mentioned so many times in this podcast. It's going to be the cornerstone of me. <laughs> it's, <clears throat> excuse me, awareness, acceptance, action. Become aware, recognize what needs to be changed, accept it exactly how it is in this moment, and then get to work. Action, 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 <clears throat> excuse me, action, 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 action. And then review, learn, grow, and then action, 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 action. So to summarize very quickly, the foundation of mental toughness, the foundation of mental toughness is optimism. The fundamental belief that things will work out for the best through the proper work, effort, attention, and focus. And then we have the four C's of mental toughness, which is confidence, control, Okay, commitment and challenge. Confidence, control, commitment, and challenge. Those are the four C's of mental toughness with the foundational piece of mental toughness being optimism. Building mental toughness and a strong mindset isn't about ignoring how you feel, by the way. It means focus. It means acceptance. It means self-awareness. Awareness, acceptance, action. It's built through an adaptable mindset and strategies to be resilient. Remember, champions adjust and obstacles make me stronger. Thank you for your time and attention. I'll see you guys next time. Lots of love. Cheers.